What is going on everyone? You guys voted on it, so today we're talking about armor in Ashes of Creation. I was going to make one video talking about weapons and armor, but there is so much info behind both, especially weapons, that I thought it would be more beneficial to break it up into two parts. But before we get into this, I just want to point out that if you're watching this video, you must be excited for Ashes of Creation, and 97.6% of you watching are not subscribed to this channel. So maybe, just maybe, we change that, and together, we click that subscribe button, because the Ashes of Creation content isn't going to be slowing down on this channel anytime soon, and I want you to keep enjoying it, so just click it, spend that two seconds, Click that button and see all the videos you want to see. Gearing your character in an MMO is a very important part when you reach endgame. The stats and equipment you gather can make all the difference when you go up against those challenging boss fights or an equal opponent on the battlefield. And in Ashes of Creation, this is no different. Keep in mind, all of this info is from early alpha and is all subject to change as development continues. When you jump into the world of Vera, you aren't some peasant in rags looking to become a hero. You are returning to a world that has been lost and you are already fairly well dressed. You might not have the best looking garb in town, but you don't look like you're wearing pants you found from a troll either as you can see in this photo of starting gear. You will set out to collect helmets, shoulders, capes, chest plates, wrists, gloves, belts, pants, boots, and jewelry, like all MMORPGs, obtained from crafting, dungeons, raids, and PvP, along with dropping off random creatures in the world, trying to get the best stats as possible for the job. You can see in this image, although this is very early concept and may not be the final stats, we have power, dexterity, constitution, willpower, wisdom, mentality, physical attack, magical attack, and block. These will be what you are looking for on your gear, along with there being elemental resistances that will help you in certain situations. Situations. Each of the races will have different stat compositions as well. Although they aren't going to be drastically different because they don't want to create the precedent that one race might be better for one class than another. You will be able to play any class on any race and still have a lot of fun. The primary class you choose will also affect these stats, although the secondary class will not contribute to the growth of your stats at all. There will be in the game what is known as light armor and heavy armor. Light armor gearing towards more mobile and more fitting when going up against magic, while heavy armor giving you more health and geared towards more physical attacks. There will be no class locks behind this. A mage isn't going to be stuck wearing only light armor, and a tank isn't going to only be wearing heavy armor. But armor will be more beneficial while being worn by certain classes and in the right situations, and certain abilities will require certain items to be equipped. And I mean, you probably can tank in light armor, but it's going to be a lot more beneficial for you if you're wearing that heavy armor, because it's going to be giving you a lot more health. There will also be gear sets with set bonuses, along with racial appearance of gear sets, and there will be tiers to the armor that can be unlocked as you reach a certain level. Stats on gear are something that will be able to be further adjusted through other methods in the game, such as enchanting. Players will have the ability to set up player-run stalls in nodes and sell their enchanting services if they choose to follow in that profession. There will be two types to this. Vertical enchantments, which are power progression for crafted items, which can enhance damage and mitigation or add different bonuses. There is a risk to this as you may over enchant your items which could potentially destroy them. Horizontal enchanting is more situational based, allowing you to do things such as swap stats. So say your weapon does fire damage and you want it to do frost. It can change that, but it's not going to make the item more powerful overall, just more fitting for the right situation. And there is no risk to this type of enchantment but can take more time and effort to be done. Armor is being designed so that you can throw on a bunch of pieces from a bunch of different sets and it isn't going to look like a horrible mess. The pieces in a way will flow together so even when combining certain sets it isn't going to look too far off and depending on the set you will be able to dye certain portions of armor or cosmetic items and you're still not going to look like this atrocious mess. There will also be a cosmetic store in the game to buy time limited non pay to win 
in sets as you can probably expect as we already have cosmetic bundles being sold for the game. These will be equipment in what is called an appearance slot that will change the look of an item while keeping its stats. This will also apply to mounts, caravans, and pets as well. So if you throw a tiger cosmetic on a horse for example, it is still going to function as a horse but just have a different look to it. As you can see the armor is a pretty generic system. It doesn't really differ much at all from regular MMOs and how it works, but from what has been shown, you can tell that a lot of effort is going into making the gear look amazing. So let me know your thoughts in the comments and I will be putting the weapons video out early next week. If you are interested in Ashes of Creation at all and want to jump in on the forums or purchase some cosmetic packs, feel free to use my referral link in the description below. Otherwise, if you haven't already, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, and turn on the bell for notifications as you stay tuned for a lot more to come.